What's going on, y'all? So Haves and half nots. You know, another episode just went by, and Candace still don't know that her son is dead. Well, practic. Well, in the preview for next week, they saying that she gonna find out, and Barack Jr. gonna be the one that tells her. And you know, I'm not really sure. I don't like him no more. I really don't like him no more because he's just really foul at this point. We'll get there. So this episode starts off where it left off last week. Mm. The fact that Justin is in his bed, bucket naked or damn near, and Landon comes into the room with Jeffrey. Landon is basically trying to rape Jeffrey. I don't care what anybody say. He is attacking this boy. He does not know how to just let this, let it go, okay? Jeffrey does not want you, all right? Let it go. He's doing the absolute most, okay? And I'm sitting here like, I understand that you're probably drunk and you're in your feelings or whatever, but you're just doing the most. And if you, you look really lame and thirsty and desperate with it and pathetic. Who would find that attractive, okay? Then he gets up in the bed trying to, um, you know, talk to Justin and saying, oh, so this what you went to and, you know, having three, that's, you know, that's a feeling that you would never understand or whatever until you try it, having a couple of them in you. And I'm sitting here like, what in the world? Get him out of here. At this point in time, I really wanted Veronica to pop in at this time and to, you know, break the whole thing up. Like, what is going on? Landon does too much and it's irritating. He was trying to get in there with Justin and Justin looking like if you don't get up out of here, he gets on top of Justin and Justin chokes him out, which I was very much happy for, okay? And then, you know, when he finally leaves, you have Justin getting all in this feeling. Why you bring him? Why you bring him up in here and that's your dude and who is that and all this stuff? And I'm like, first of all, you have no right to ask questions. Second of all, nobody told you to come here. And this is all the stuff that Jeffrey is saying. He was like, I missed you and all this stuff. And what you acting like, I don't mean nothing to you. I love you. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> Tina Turner said, what love got to do with it, okay? Jeffrey was like, what are you talking about, love? He was like, you know what? I don't know what it is that you did to me, but I ain't never had no feelings for nobody like this. Not for no man. Basically, that's what he's saying. Jeffrey at one point told him, you know, if she said, he said, had I not came into your life, you still would have been doing the same thing that you've been doing. Sucking out prisoners in the backseat of the car. I said, so use a bottom. Jeffrey, you got to choose your bottoms more carefully or whatever, because he was getting all upset with you, you got Landon, you know, you only hit it once and he just, you know, he can't stop thinking about it. He's comparing everybody else to you and, you know, Justin just losing his mind, okay? He was like, why don't you go home to your wife, all right? He get, he said, you just want me to get mad so I can hit you and all this stuff. I said, no, that's, that's you projecting, all right? He just really wants you to go, okay? He doing all this extra stuff and then here comes Veronica with her phone recording. I said, get it all, Veronica. This woman, I was with her. And it's not that I want her to expose him or whatever or out him. I just want the threat to be there so he could calm down. Because he himself said that I can't call you or whatever because Veronica got my phone or Veronica knows and all this stuff. That's why I just popped up. So send me a text, okay? You know, ask the desk or whatever. You don't just pop up in the bedroom and, and, and think it's going to be all good when I already established that I don't want you like that. It's not my fault that you done came in here and fell in love with my bujina. That's not my fault, okay? You don't do no stuff like that. And so... Veronica came in and came out. Of course, little Justin gets in his feelings, throwing chairs and stuff at the mirror. Mind you, um, what's the name of the episode? The episode is called A Broken Mirror. <laughs> I said, oh, okay, so that's why. But moving on from that little drama, we got, um, yeah, my head get so fucking long. I don't know how to fucking do. Anyway, moving on from that, we have Jim down in the lobby of the hotel that everybody just so happens to be conjugating at, um, trying to figure out where war is, okay? War just got off the phone with um, Erica, 
Okay. She telling him that she can't get a read on what Candy said. She know that she in the house or in this hotel, but she just won't tell her the room number. You know, he pissed off. He want her dead and all this stuff. And I'm like, Erica, you need to die. You just, you just doing so, so much. Okay. And at this point, Jim is with Oscar. Oscar said he got three different numbers for Ward. We got to figure out which one it is before he gets rid of it because he's been getting rid of the numbers because he's been on burner sales, okay? So they going any, many, mighty more and checking them out. And he finally gets through, and this is in the midst of him talking to Erica. So when he gets through, you know, the whole thing is he's trying to convince him to come see him, all right? I need you to come see me. We need to get this stuff done. I'm trying to protect you. Ward ain't trying to hear that and hangs up on him. Mind you, Oscar said you need to keep him on the phone for 12 minutes to, so I can track where he at. The only thing that he was able to track was the area, not the actual location, but the area. And um, this is the time where Oscar let him know, listen, whatever he that Mama Malone got going, um, whatever it is that's going or whatever with Roy, the stuff has already started. He was like, what are you talking about? Girl, Oscar just so happened to pull up a police report, not a police report, a news report. He said, it's all over. I'm surprised you haven't heard about it. And I'm sitting here like, well, ain't no police that came and found him or whatever to question him about this body because that's what the news reports are talking about. The body of the DA agent, um, Jennifer Salazar, uh, Salisbury was, um, dropped at a news station and they don't want putting a report out there because it says crier victim. Okay. And you know, Jim is like, I don't need this mess. Okay. And he had to call up there to, uh, David, where you at? David is up there waking up from getting some good stuff. Okay. Erica put him to bed. He woke up and said, I heard you talking. So, you know, I need to see you and all this stuff. And he was like, you look so sexy. She was like, in your shirt. <laughs> I said, take that shirt off and give it back to him so he can go handle this. And I said, David, don't fall for this girl because, you know, it's not going to end well. And he is falling hard. He up there doing this little foreplay. And, you know, <laughs> she was like, what about this? He said, oh, that's sexier. You know what? I want to tell you something. Thank you for, um you know, sticking in there with me and my stuff, uh, my wife and all this shit, understanding my situation. And it was like, okay, you know, um, your wife is just, it's, it's, it's laughable. You know, it's actually enjoyable. You like, her, she's kind of dramatic and everything, but I can match that with my stuff. So, you know, it's nothing. I said, girl, I really want Veronica to wring her neck right. I really do. See, this is why we need Veronica. We can't stand Veronica most times. 95% of the time, but 5% of the time she come through and we want her to come through because Erica is doing some dirty stuff, you know, to Candace, to David, and I'm just not here for it. You know, she still won't even tell Candace, like, I don't care what's going on. If you're trying to get at her or whatever, you still could have called her and told her that your, her son was dead, but no, everybody knows that but her, and that's messed up, so... He is sprung at this moment. I think it's just lust, really. He finally got somebody that actually, you know, just want him for right now. And not, it, it's simple. It's easy. It ain't no tricks to it or whatever that we see at the moment with our eyes like Veronica. It's not dramatic. It's not extra or anything, you know. So, he goes down there to talk to Jim. <sighs> Jim like, listen, I don't know what you've been doing, but... We need to go find war, okay? You seen what Mama Malone did? You see this stuff right here? Look at this new support. They knew right off the back that it was Mama Malone who did it because it was like, I thought you made that body disappear. And he was like, Mama Rose said she'd take care of it. It was like, you... He, at this point, David didn't even know what was really going on. He was like, what happened? Listen, it was a shootout uh, with war. A black kid almost killed, you know... Um, Mama Rose's grandson, or almost shot him, whatever. And I was like, what? And I'm sitting here like, Mama Rose, racist or something? Because then all of a sudden, they started talking about um, something that happened, what it was called, Red Tuesday or something like that. Red Robins over here talking about, um, did, did you remember the last time that something happened like this? A black kid shot at um, one of her peoples or whatever, and she just went crazy and took out a whole freaking project. Okay? 14 people, women, men, kids, all that got killed, okay? And he was like, I know, because we helped get him off. You know, I said, you helped the murderer get off? Oh, okay. We see how y'all do that. And basically, they trying to figure out 
what to do and how to get war. That's their whole agenda right now. And, you know, Jim did try to call Catherine. Catherine is not answering. We saw her at the police station with um Hannah. And she got the phone call and hung up right on the face. Like, I'm not going to answer this. And so, you know, Jim told David to call her. And he did. And he left the message. And that's all that he can do at this point. Meanwhile, back at the police station, um, Mitch, we see him outside. And he's on the phone calling Veronica trying to see if um he would be, she would be his, Benny's lawyer. She was like, I'm already his lawyer. I'm already here. You know, we can meet up. And when he said his name, she was like, oh, okay. So I guess, you know, the Malones don't play. Everybody knows the Malone. They make him look shook a little bit. Because even when um Mitch introduced himself to Catherine and he said, my name is Mitch Malone. She was like, the Malones? And he was like, yeah, you know, it is what it is. Okay. So Veronica came up in there <laughs> after... Mitch was like, so, um, you know, his lawyer's on his way, and she said she's already out here. Catherine talking to Hannah like, wait a minute, who is she? And I talked to Marty, and Marty ain't even picked up yet. He can't, he hasn't even really got back to me, so what are you talking about? Hannah looking confused. It was like, who is lawyer? Veronica just, Veronica is queen of just popping up and popping in at the right moment to give a shady line, okay? And it be so on cue and on point, and you be like, you know what? <laughs> Okay, she was like, I'm right here. Hannah said, hell no. Hell no. And I said, girl, just let it go. You know, Hannah, you don't have a right. I know you feel a way about this whole situation, but your son is in this um, police station unjustly, you know, and he's a black man. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, Secret Service is involved. Just let Veronica do her thing right now because you really have no choice at this moment. Marty can't get there. You know, you can't depend on that if he can actually help or whatever. And Veronica is here right now. We put aside y'all differences and all this stuff and just let her do it. And, you know, Hannah going to be Hannah, okay? She was like over her dead body. You're not going to be her, his lawyer. You're not going to do anything. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not going to ask you nothing. At one point, you know, Catherine was like, well, she is a good lawyer, so you're going to have to go ahead and go with her. They trading bars with each other. Talk about bang, bang and all this stuff. We know your secrets and I know your truth and you know my truth and all this stuff. And at one point... She was like, I can get you in to see Benny, okay? They tell her what was going on, the Secret Service, and then, and then you know, she was like, Catherine even had to say her reach don't reach that high, okay? And I was like, yours don't either. I said, well, can y'all stop doing this? We talking about Benny at this moment. Leave that alone, okay? And so, at this moment, <laughs> Veronica said, Veronica is extremely petty. She was like, all you have to do is ask me. Hannah said, I'm not going to ask you nothing. I was like, come on, I asked her to, you know, can you go in there to see Benny? Well, like, Veronica, stop playing. At this point, <laughs> I think Hannah was about to. And Veronica said, no, get down on your knees. I said, girl, you done lost your mind. Get down on your knees. That's what you need to be, okay? Because you always on Benny like that. Get down on your knees. You know, you see, you're doing it too much, okay? She said, I'd be damned if I do. And then at this point... <laughs> Hannah, um, I forget what Hannah said, but, um, Mitch was like, could you please just help us get Benny out and all this stuff? Veronica was like, that's how you ask somebody. And I cannot recall at the moment what exactly Hannah said to, um, Veronica, but Veronica was like, oh, with your Miss Harriet Tubman, I'm gonna run away. I said, stop it. I chuckled. I cackled so hard. Listen, <laughs> Veronica, see, that's the reason why Veronica is needed on this show. We can't kill her all. We can have, she needs to have something happen to her really, really bad. You know, get amnesia or something and then come back doing good and then all of a sudden pop back and be like, no, nah, that ain't what I used to do. You know, stuff like that. So back there with Benny, Benny just figuring out how deep this stuff goes. They want his DNA to um basically uh see if he is part of this whole thing, uh, saying it's a terrorist plot. He was like, I don't have to. He was like, yes, you do, because either you can give it to us or you, we can take it from you because 
that's what we got the right to do. He was like, no, you don't, because this is America. All right. He was like, no, this is not America. This is Homeland Security. I said, Homeland? Homeland, what is going on? All right. At this point, Benny is pissed off. And I would have been too. He said, do you want to leave or do you want to stay up in here? So just give us the DNA. And I said, what is happening? Then all of a sudden, they throw in that saying that, you know, do you know Mitch Malone? Okay, it was like, why, who, what? It was like, well, Mitch and his people, his family is being investigated um, for gang and all this other stuff t and, and in connection with some Syrian terrorists and stuff. I said, crime organization, I said, wait a minute. We're just throwing Syrians up in here like this all willy-nilly. Somebody is looking at this like, we ain't got nothing to do with this. Why are we always getting put up in this mess? You know, but <laughs> it's a... <laughs> He was like, what that got to do with me? I don't know nothing about the ins and outs of that organization. Hey, I just found out that M uh, Mitch is a Malone, okay? Literally two days ago, I found this out, all right? And at this point, Penny is over. He said, go ahead and give me the, um, go ahead and take it, okay? You can go ahead and take my DNA. I said, Benny, you just might as well at this point because they keep messing with you and messing with you and messing with you and don't make no sense. And it all comes together. It all comes together when we see this scene with Candace and Barack Jr. We always said, don't trust that man. Okay? Something was just a little off. I never really trusted his escrows, you know? I don't think they're natural. Okay? And I just knew not to put my hopes and dreams in there. But before I get to them, let me just get to White and um, Anna. Jeffrey goes over there to see White. White supposedly sleeping in the bed. Anna like, he doing good. Fine. You know, he was like, yeah, he got people that love him. And I know this because I, I, I was in love with him. It was like, you in love with him? You know, he's not gay, but I'm gay. It was like, you know, it's understandable. Okay, cool. So when he leaves, Wyatt overheard everything. He was just playing, um, laying up in the bed, faking sleep or whatever. So he having this conversation with Anna. And before that, Anna had got a phone call from Oscar. He trying to find out where uh, Wyatt at and offer her, you know, $50,000. She said, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, You can, you have to find somebody else. I said, I would have rat him out for $50,000. These student loans got to get paid, baby, okay? You know, it's Wyatt. Who cares, okay? But apparently Anna does. And Wyatt just questioning her, who was that on the phone? Was that your boyfriend? Who was that? And, oh, your boyfriend, you probably messing around with Jarvis, the doctor, or whatever. She said, no, it ain't nothing like that. They just talking and going into the conversation about how Jeffrey really does care for him. He was like, no, he cares for me because he want to sleep with me. She was like, no, I didn't see that. His love is unconditional. It has no conditions to it, okay? He just loves you because he loves you. You know, he wants to see you be good and do good and get better. So they are vibing. Next thing you know, they're going to watch TV together. I said, is this part of the patron, uh, patient, client, privilege and stuff like this? We supposed to be doing this? But okay. You know, they going to wind up getting in a relationship. I already know that. I can see that coming. But let's go back to this hotel. Candace is sitting over here trying to get her number transferred to another phone. They said, no, we can't do that because somebody else got it. She's getting her feelings over that. Charles come out and was like, maybe you just need to go ahead and get a new phone. Okay. And we're just going to speed through this whole conversation. You need to do better. Okay. You need to get on the right track. All right. Um, I know all about you. I know all about the stuff that you've done. I know that you have a son. I know everything. And, you know, we can groom you to be better. She was like, girl, what are you talking about? I was like, I'm good when I am. She was like, no, you don't have to do all of that because she was like, I can't. My, I need my phone. It's not going to work getting a new phone because I, I have to transfer my contacts and all this stuff. I was like, you don't need those contacts no more, okay? What I need you to do is to be the lady by my side and all this stuff. Um, Basically telling her, you know, I was once in the Army. They plucked me out and they, you know, fixed me up and look at where I'm at now, okay? The military, whatever, look where I'm at now. And that we can do the same thing for you because I want you by my side. She was like, girl, what are you talking Okay, listen, if you want me to do all this stuff, Make me first lady. He was like, wow, so you one of those type of chicks that, you know, give an inch, you take a mile. I said, well, basically the conversation that you telling her, that's what you were telling her. That's what I'm inferring. You said you wanted her by your side. So obviously if she going to be by your side, that means first lady, if you're going to win the presidency or almost, you know. So 
all of a sudden, they started talking about the stuff that's been going on with her. She was like, you know, I'm wanted for murder. You know, there's a body. He was like, yeah, I know. I was like, well, can you get rid of it? He said, the way to get rid of it, the way that you're saying, is too, it's too messy. You know, it'd be too obvious that it's trying to be a cover-up. So what we'll have to do is pin it on somebody else. And he was like, well, Candace was like, well, who are you talking about? He was like, your brother, Ben. And at that moment in time, I would have been like, Candace, get up out of this. Get up out of this, okay? You better not be with this man and stay with him. Like, I just didn't understand it. I didn't understand. Like, you could have picked any other victim, any other person to pin this murder on or whatever. But you went on ahead and you pinned it on her brother of all people. Hey, you could have put it on war, okay? If you been up in there and, and see, acting like you all up in her business and you know everybody that goes in and out, you could have pinned it on the old John that was stalking her or, you know, somebody like that. But no, you're going to put it on her brother and you think that she's going to be cool with it. And I swear, if Candace is cool with it, Girl, we're going to have to reevaluate my life for you because you're doing the absolute most. I'm waiting for a bad bitch Candace to come back. I really don't see her at this moment. I really don't understand what's going on with her character. It's not gelling well with me. Um, When we see this episode next week, she better not find out that her son is dead at the end of the episode and we got to go through a whole nother week to feel, uh, realize the reaction and her actually going back to the Fountain Drop Hotel to see and all this stuff. Because at one point, Charles did say, why don't you um call your mama? Because she was like, what if my son trying to call me and all this stuff? He said, why don't you call your mama? You know she ain't going to do that. But I just don't know y'all. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about this episode. And I will see you guys later for being Mary Jane. Peace.